today we got a special deck for you. This is called Cleaver Ambush. So Cleaver got changed so that he does damage based on the cards in your hand. So for every card you have in your hand, one more damage. Uh, so you want to play him early, ideally. And the best way for me to do that is with Bruberhoog, so I can just pull him instantly, like that. Now you might be bored of seeing hand buff ambush. The deck list that I ended up using is on the right. And there's a little bit of differences in the particular version that's in this game. This game I ran with a Farseers. However, Farseers have changed. Well, they haven't really changed that much, but it's really that the Dragoons have changed. Since they both trigger at the end of the turn, Dragoons no longer buff Farseers, which is annoying. So here you saw me pull out Cleaver, kill off his Impervigades. This ruined my opponent's ability to really win in this round. This deck is very heavy on removal. It does not run Scorches, though, because we have some pretty big units, too. And I decided to play Commando Neophytes later, so I really don't want to have a Scorch with Commando Neophytes. Here's an important thing to note. Yaven is 13 strength, so if your opponent has an 8 strength card on the board, you can use Yorvith Meditation to get a perfect swing. Another note is King of Beggars have cha has changed. He no longer takes account of hand buffs in your hand. So when you play him onto the board, though uh, he'll just use his base strength for the calculation and then apply the hand buffs later. So that's a big buff to King of Better Beggars when you are playing hand buff. So you can see the farce here. I removed those from the deck after I lost a ranked game. All of these are ranked games. Ideally, I would wait like one more card before I would, you know, kill off his Impervigade, but that's still a pretty good play. I removed, I did it, that was a 20 point Yorvith there. Here I decide to do something a little cheeky. I decide to continue playing out this round because I want to gather a little bit more points from my Dragoons. I decide to apply Fog. The reason for this is that it allows Milana to steal his Enforcer. Unfortunately, this does give him a Spy. But I don't think the Spies will proc if I steal it on his turn. That was a lot of dings. So I steal his Emperor Brigade because it's 4 strength. But it removes it from the Fog, so it's also kind of not great. I decided to play that card just so that I can drain a few more cards from my opponent. You can't really remove it. The idea is the more Dragoon buffs I take from this turn, the better. I end up going even card advantage, which is great, in my opinion. I got rid of one of his most important counters at the end of the game, which is to use uh, Menno to kill off a card. One of my bigger cards. However, with this deck, he's never really going to ever get to target one of those except when it's King of Beggars, which I'm going to eventually have to play. So, I play Rally in this deck because I really want to win round one, and so consistency matters. I have, like, you see, there's only two cards left in my deck. You don't actually have to play Rally because you'll pretty much get all your golds. His deck thins super well. I don't know why he didn't scorch, I mean, lock the other card, but it's not a big deal. So, another thing is, Eglias is not getting a lot of value right now because their Nilfgaard, Spy Nilfgaard, doesn't run any spells and others. We're going to run straight into this next game. This is against a Witcher <laughs> Slave Driver deck. Um, but on my last point, I think spells are going to become more and more common as people get access to the rune stones and realize how strong that is. So my opponent played a sapper. It comes on the board as a Nilfgaard card, so it's really bizarre. <laughs> I really would like to see more... Uh, how would I put it? 
Nilfgaard like ambush cards. I think that would be really cool. So here I decide to play out Cleaver better now than never. Another potential target for Cleaver would have been Yavin, and that would give Milena, Milena a better t hit target. However, I have plans for Yavin. My opponent's stealing cards from my deck, and inside my deck are Dragoons. And Dragoons are 8 strength. 13 and 8 strength are really good because they're on the Fibonacci sequence for Yorvith Meditations. I'm consistently getting good targets for Yorvith Meditations because I run Spies. All the Spies have 13 strength, so if you're going to run Yorvith Meditation, you're probably going to want to have Yavin in your deck. Boom. You see? Yavin's now 1 strength, and then I killed the Dragoon. Maximum value you can get out of a Meditation. However, my opponent has other plans. That flashing sequence. So that was probably the most points I would have ever seen from a buffing uh, Mandrake root. <laughs> it was 18 points. Pretty good. I have to keep in account that my opponent has healing in their hand. Now it doesn't quite match the amount of points I got from Yorvith, but it's pretty close. <laughs> and it was a silver. Decide to thin my deck more. I don't have Illyrian in this deck, though I could easily run her. So my opponent's running the Witchers, which just kill off my Dragoons before I can get any value. Well, I get one point of value from them. And here is a pretty good time to pass. Usually I don't lose round one. But it does happen. Usually I'm worrying about uh, removal at the end of the th thing. I should open up with a Dragoon here, but I don't. The reason why I want to go with a Dragoon is that I can just Azure's Thunder the Siri and get two procs off the Dragoon otherwise, because my opponent's probably wanting to pa instant pass. Here he might pass anyways. I'm killing the Siri to kind of like Let's not have any issues here. I was kind of deliberating between do I want a Neophyte or a Dragoon. I think that Neophyte's just on average better tempo. As always, I'm going to want to open up with... I should open up with a Truvial. I made a mistake by opening up with Neophyte here. Because he's just going to resurrect his Viper. And... Teruvial's just like, you can't target that. Otherwise, the, the, anyways, the Neophyte was going to die. There was nothing I could do about it. Even if I played the Spotters, the Spotters would just have taken the hit on instead, and I want to get the value from the Neophyte. So he stole one of my uh, <laughs> Sappers again. He didn't take it from my deck, but he made a copy of it. So, I want you guys to guess what I'm going to rally. I have three cards left in my deck. There aren't very many choices. <laughs> There's only one uh, gold card I haven't used. And let's just say it's going to become pretty useful. Decide to... Because I can wait another turn before I play my bigger Sapmer. I'm going to. Give him fewer things to be able to target in the final thing. I got a maximum value out of my Crushing Trap. Here, I can just play a Sapmer. And I don't care if I put it in the bottom row, because it's not going to flip when I have to worry about it. At worst, I'm going to take 4 damage, because either Rally's going to take the, cause it to burst, dealing the 4 damage. I'm not sure if it happens after I resolve the Rally or before I resolve the Rally. Regardless, it's only hitting uh, one thing, and that's 4 damage silver, which is pretty, pretty bad. <laughs> he just used uh, Trial of the Grasses. It buffs a Witcher card, which the Vipers are, to uh, 25 points. Uh, and that makes him a prime target for his own Mandrake route. I thank you for playing a deck that has specials in it. Specials in it. Mm. And then Truvial flips, and it was a really close game. I think Nilfgaard is probably the strongest deck out there right now. I don't think you should play 
the normal Siri because there's so much removal. Uh, but because a lot of people are running Azure's Thunders and stuff like that, you can easily put in the spear in this deck because the sappers are 11 strength. And I have a spear now. I didn't have it in the beginning. I wasn't going to craft a bronze card. I decide not to pull the cleaver. The reason why is that I'd rather play, pull the cleaver from my deck with Brewerhoop. And you could argue that that's probably not the smartest thing to do, but I already have three silvers in my hand, and I have cards that pull silvers, so more silvers in my deck, the better Brewerhoop becomes. I didn't use cleaver there because the two cards I'm playing are going to get replaced by a simple, you know, drawing two cards at the end of the turn. So I'm going to wait for my opponent to play stuff. This deck has lots of removal, and I don't even mind that he pushed that back into my deck because I can just fetch it with Reconnaissance. So <laughs> pretty much all that Reconnaissance brings me is uh, Elven Mercenaries, and so I'm going to... The reason why I'm playing Cleaver is that I want to deny his leader ability. He doesn't have two crewmen on the board, so I'm not super afraid. And he winched that out, so that makes it really risky for him doing a triple uh, play with them. He couldn't have done it because he had one in his hand, of course. But I'm going just Azure Thunder this. This does enable the double crewman again, but it's not that big of a deal to me because I'm just ble bleeding this round. Now, you might wonder why he runs Pavetta. The reason Pavetta is being run in this deck is that it helps Henselt pull more things. If he gets a brick tan, he can push one of the machines back into his deck that way. Now, you might wonder why he runs Neneke. Putting the winched out uh, machines back into his deck allows him to pull four machines out with Henselt because the winch is now a new machine in the deck. And so if he had two of the same, one machine in his hand and he pulled the same machine with winch and then put that winch got, that winched unit got destroyed. You know, it's just, it's going to be able to be played again. Now, this last round is going to be really, really easy. So I'm just going to let, I'm going to serenade you with some inspiring words and just bathe in the memes, okay? Very easy. I have to meme. I have to play. My Gwent deck is not just in me. It is me. When life gets me down, I play my Gwent deck. The rest of the world may follow the rules, but I must follow my heart. You know that feeling you get when there's a meme in your deck and it's waiting just for you? You must have faith, brother. But the great Rethaz will never listen. He will listen to our meme. Only a meme, only a meme has the power to change a heart. But Rethaz will never give me permission. I am done asking permission. When you see your moment, you mustn't let it pass you by. You must seize it. Mr. Starkhouse, what did it take for you to seize your moment? I had to have faith in my move. No one was going to hand it to me. It was up to me to reach out for that meme, grab it tight, and make it come true.